Hey, this is Chris from Beertown Austin. I'm here at uh, the Root Cellar. I'm Silas Parker with Dark Side Brewing. Welcome to another p- episode of Over Pint. Cheers. Cheers. Yeah. All right, so it's a Belgian beer. Why don't you tell me a little bit more about it? Well, this is my quadruple. I call it Mark of the Yeast 78666. This would be my flagship beer for the dark side. It is the dark side itself. Comes in at about 11%. Kind of touches on an imperial stout, if you will. Uh, it's a lot of chocolate, black patent malt. But moreover, I use locally grown adjuncts such as wormwood, yarrow, sage, and elderberries that are picked off the San Marcos River. And these are all ancient medicinal plants that have been used for centuries in beers to help accentuate the, uh, you know, the medicinal and the healing properties of a beer, as opposed to just being something that we're all just getting drunk on. And what you makes me feel better. Yeah. (laughs) Right. And it does make you feel better. And, you know, this is the kind of beer it's high gravity, but based on the yeast and, based on the fact that it hasn't been filtered or refined and the ingredients are so pure and raw that I consider it a hangover proof beer. You know, we've all definitely experienced commercial beer. Have you tested that theory? <laughs> yeah, I vouch for it. I mean, the hangover is different. Again, if you drink too much, you're going to be a little slower the next day, but like no headaches or anything like that. You know, you don't get the guts or anything, but... Um, yeah, it's very good. Thank you. Um, yeah, so this is one of, uh, what, five, I guess, staple beers you have. What are the others? Well, the five staples would be the Blonde, the Double, the Strong Golden, the Quadruple. And that's your standard Belgian one, two, three punch. Most of your typical Trappist, Monastery breweries are going to be brewing something along the lines usually they just base theirs off alcohol content and i did that same model to start with all my beers be six eight and ten percent respectively uh, i'm working on a pale that i would say is far from an american pale i wanted to bring a pale to the table that was more like what you would find in, in europe you know brewed with noble hops uh, and beyond the pale we would also have a tripel which um the main accent you're going to see there, as well as in the mark of the yeast, is the use of bread and omices, wild yeast. Uh, and as the beer conditions for about three months, uh, that bread releases a little bit of flavor and also keeps the process going and allows a little bit more refinement within the bottle. So when you open it, all that's released and that potential that's been stored up for so long, you know, is released into your glass and it is without a doubt noticeable. So, yeah, and your beers are... They're conditioned for three months, three right, months. before they come out? Yeah, it's uh, about two weeks to three weeks through the primary and secondary, and then about two and a half months in the bottle. And, you know, there's zero filtering going on. What you're dealing with at that point is, you know, the traditional method of allowing your clarity to come through uh, flocculation and the settling of all the sediment to the bottom of the beer. And, you know, proper handling, proper pouring of the beer allows you to pull all the clean beer off the top without rousing the yeast at the bottom, which is not only, you know, not bad for you in any way, it's not actually detrimental put into the beer, though it's probably preferred not to if you want a nice clean beer. But the trick is, and why I say that it's hangover proof, is inside that yeast lies all the b vitamins you know b2 through b12 as well as as many antioxidants as in a glass of tea and you know that's what helps prevent your body from crashing after drinking alcohol which is a you know pretty severe poison closed (laughs) actually yeah we're in the root cellar which is uh not open sunday afternoons and this i guess we can go into talking about uh i guess you're you will kind of skip around your your setup here uh, you brew in the root cellar after hours, right? That's correct. Uh, they're a cafe style. So we do breakfast and lunch every day except Mondays. And that menu is excellent. Everyone in town loves it. People do come from out of town just to eat here. Uh, I took that opportunity that, you know, of them being closed five, four nights out of the week 
for me to come in and utilize the kitchen space, utilize, you know, the few benefits of a commercial kitchen to brew my beer and set up, make beer, break down, put it all away before the kitchen staff comes back in the morning. Um, and this allowed the restaurant to pretty much accept me with open arms to start brewing here because they barely see any transition. I don't take up any space. I don't get in the way of the lion cooks when they're trying to make sandwiches or steaks or whatever delicious frittata quiche explosion they might be working on. <laughs> so tell me about, uh, tell me a little bit about your brewing philosophy. And I know that you know, from what we've talked about, you, you know, use a lot of local stuff and you try to incorporate that. And I feel like you're pretty serious about brewing your beers. You want to talk about that? Um, if there was an easy way to sum it up, I like to say that I take a Dallas standpoint. You know, the less we can do to control the beer, the action of the beer, the better. You know, yeast has been on a symbiotic relationship with mankind for thousands of years. It's probably one of the f closest organisms to our heart. And I don't mean literally, but as far as, you know, culturally and as civilization has been concerned, every, every culture, no matter how large or small, has had some sort of fermentation with which they produce alcohol, which they use to reach altered states, which they use to reach God. You know, and it's a critical factor, and it's become a matter of shwill, at this point where people are using it for all the wrong reasons. Um, I take water, I never use water from the city pipes or anything. We get water straight out of the Edwards Aquifer and it's hard as hell. It's, the entire country of Belgium lies on limestone. The entire hill country lies on karst limestone. We're pulling the same hardness out of our water as they are theirs. We do no filtering, do no pH adjustment. We allow the mash to bring the pH down and we're making hard ales, strong hard ales, and that hard water is good for that. If you're making a lager, we would have to soften it, but I don't make lager, I don't make Pilsner, I'm not interested in that. I'm interested in rich raw beer that reminds you of something you would drink while sitting in a castle somewhere by candlelight. And uh, a huge star sign yeah, behind your head. You know, and a few people in cloaks sacrificing something. <laughs> uh, some screaming going on somewhere so you know i stay true to the that one area i stay true strictly i use malts from you know germany czechoslovakia and strictly noble hops with the exception of fuggles and pearl which would also be considered somewhat noble in the sense they're low alpha acid uh, so those ingredients i have to import but everything else i use comes locally into the beer and anytime i have a chance to bring something local into my beer to put it back into local diet, I will. So. Very nice. Um, yeah, so you guys have been, you're almost been at a year brewing here. Um, what are uh, what are plans for Dark Side in the future? Well, we consider the Root Cellar as a, a beautiful opportunity to run our pilot beers against the amazing demographic of alcoholics that is the town of San Marcos. And based on the feedback we've already gotten, you know, and the recipes that I've locked down as a result, we're pretty much making the moves within the next year for sure. Hopefully in about six months, we'll be buying a barn just outside of San Marcos. And within that barn, we'll quadruple our production to start with. But then beyond that, you know, as time grows, we'll expand even further. But... I would expect within next year from Dark Side to see us with a brewery license distributing our beer, hopefully up into Austin, even at the Whip Inn for all y'all, but namely all over San Marcos, not just bottles, but kegs as well. Yeah, sounds good to me. Cheers. Yeah. Man, that's cool news. So, um, yeah, we're out of time. But, uh, yeah, Silas, thanks for having us out, man. Thanks and, for coming. Uh, yeah, keep making the good beers and hopefully uh, be more available soon. Thanks for watching. Yeah. Cheers. One more. One more. Yeah. All right.